So I didn't think I would be making this video anytime soon or maybe ever, but last week I pulled the plug and bought the Leica Q2. Something I've had on my wish list for a couple of years. I wanted to break down the reasons for getting the Q2 and my first impressions using the camera, just in case that's an interest for you guys or maybe you're actually thinking about buying the camera yourself. Now I can't make a video about a Leica without talking about the elephant in the room, which is obviously the price tag. Brand new, this camera is about £5,000, which is wild. Is it worth that amount of money? I don't know. I can't give you a credible enough answer. I've only owned the camera for a matter of days. In short, I hope it is worth it or you'll see me selling it. Thankfully, Leicas hold their value pretty well. This video is not sponsored by MPB, but that is where I bought the camera in a like new condition. I was recently clearing out a ton of old camera bodies, camera lenses that was simply collecting dust. And I realized that the price of that gear in exchange for the Leica Q2 would bring the asking price down. That made the decision to buy something like this a little bit easier and um, yeah, saved a ton of money. And honestly, when I first unboxed the camera, I was really impressed with the condition of it. I know it says like new, but I was expected to see some wear and tear perhaps. If I bought that camera directly from the Leica store brand new, I wouldn't question its condition. So if you're interested in saving some money, again, this isn't sponsored, uh, I would recommend checking out what MPB are doing. One of my biggest goals this year, and always in fact, is to take more photos. And that might seem a little bit uh, silly given that videography and photography is my day job as well, but I really want to put the reps in. I like to think of it in terms of my life scale or my lifetime. I'm so early in my photography career and my photography journey or whatever you want to say. And the only way I can exponentially grow my skills as a photographer or my eye, as you like to say, is to just get out as much as physically possible. Regular viewers of this channel will know I have pretty much exclusively been using the Fujifilm X100V for all of my street and documentary work. That camera is fantastic and I want to address the messages I got immediately after posting about the Q2 of people saying, does this mean I'm going to get rid of the X100V? Probably not. I think I'll still want to carry around the X100V in random situations and small gatherings and personal work and just, it's such a good camera, I don't think I'll ever want to get rid of it. But that camera is so good that it's actually one of the biggest reasons and it led me on to buying the Q2. I love using the 35mm focal length on the X100V, but from using a 28mm on other cameras and now on the Leica Q2, it does feel a little bit more freeing in terms of compositions. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think the 35 35mm is my favourite look for street photography and everyday situations. But there were occasions and there were times where I had to take a step back or I just wanted to include more of the environment. Not too much, like I said, I think 35mm is pretty much perfect. But there were times where I thought a 28mm would have been ideal. And knowing that the Leica Q2 has 47 megapixel files, the image quality is insane and I'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm happy to use the 28 millimeter combined with that image quality, the 47 megapixel files, and I can just crop in if need be. So yeah, the 28 millimeter is exciting. I won't talk about any more of the Leica Q2 specs or specifics because you either probably know what this camera's about or you can simply Google it. So why did I buy this camera? It's a very capable tool, I think that goes without saying, but it's not always about the technical aspects that sells gear. The tools that we use actually need to excite and inspire the user. GX Ace made a fantastic YouTube video all about this subject, and I'll leave a link in the description. You need to definitely watch that if you haven't already. It doesn't matter if the camera is absolutely perfect and ticks every single box that you need as a photographer if you don't care to actually use it. And I think a lot of Leica's brand appeal is that feeling to to want to create something. It's hard to describe, but I was recently talking to fellow street photographer, Matt Feeney, who uses a Leica M10, and he described this experience perfectly. That feeling stops me thinking about other gear, and my intention is purely about finding frames. In a way, it has nothing to do with fancy tech and specifications and everything to do with the way it feels to use the camera. The X100V removed any friction from me wanting to pick the camera up and go out and take photos. And that is partly a reason why I knew I would probably like the Q2. I've made plenty of videos over the months talking about the benefits of a fixed lens camera. And the X100V is probably the most hyped up camera of the year. And for good reason, it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm interested to see how good the Leica Q2 is arguably the top dog of all fixed lens cameras. It's an absolutely stunning piece of kit. Excuse the high price tag, but Leica really do make some of the best looking cameras on the planet. 
Talking about the iPhone very quickly, it takes very good images. It's very convenient to use. I have it with me all the time, but it's possibly the least fun way of taking photos. It feels too clinical. It's pretty much all software. It doesn't have a physical shutter button. It's a very capable tool, but yeah, for photography, I don't like to use my phone. And that's kind of the point I'm making. My phone is what, the most perfect pocketable camera ever, uh, but I just don't want to use it. Okay, talking about my first impressions, now I obviously can't give you a detailed review. I've had the camera for less than a week, but here are some of my initial thoughts. It feels solid, the type of solid where if I dropped it, it would not only hurt my bank account, but the ground as well. You can just tell by the way the buttons feel from the shutter dial to the aperture ring, this thing is built with insane attention to detail. It might be hard to showcase on video, but the sleek, minimal design combined with a well-built body and lens makes this camera not just look great, but feel really professional. However, it is much heavier and way less pocketable than say the X100V, so that in and of itself might be a reason to put some people off. Let's talk about that full frame sensor and those whopping 47 megapixels. This camera is producing some of the highest quality images I've ever seen. The 28mm lens is incredibly sharp and that's something I noticed immediately. The files are also fantastic to work with in Lightroom. I feel like this has opened up a new post-processing experience. From using the X100V and JPEGs mainly, it kind of put the idea of photo editing and post-processing on the back burner. It just wasn't that important because as many of you know, Fujifilm JPEGs are great. But I've been really impressed with the Q2 files and it's been a long time since I've been excited about getting these files into Lightroom and working on the images in post. And the quality of the images from this camera is making me think more with printing in mind. I would love to see these insane quality files physically in my hand. I never get tired of saying that the best way to experience photography is physically on paper in real life. Our screens make photography way too clinical and less valuable in many ways because people can just scroll past people's work. So with that in mind, maybe this is the year I start printing more of my work as well. 28 millimeter seems wide enough to capture as much as you can in frame and have different things going on in the scene, which I think is great for street photography, but not too wide where the image might end up being a little bit distorted. It just feels appropriate for everyday street and documentary stuff. And something else that gives me confidence is that Gary Winogrand, arguably the best street photographer to ever do it, used a 28 millimeter all the time. So looking at his work is certainly an inspiration. Some of you may already know that I've started a weekly newsletter where I'll be sending emails about anything I find interesting in the world of photography. The emails might be a little bit more random than the kind of stuff I post on YouTube, but that means I can be a little bit more honest and unscripted as well. I think it's just important that I perhaps try and build a community off of YouTube that's not just reliant on YouTube views. Now don't get me wrong, YouTube is like my favorite thing to do in terms of making videos and photography. I love that I have this channel, but what happens if Instagram or YouTube or whatever just disappears tomorrow? So. I think it's important. I build an audience and share with you guys what's going on in my world of photography via written form and images and stuff via email as well. So if you're interested in any of that, which I feel like was a bit of a ramble, check out the focal point, new weekly email. I'll be sending out to those that care. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Road to 100,000 subscribers. I think we might be able to get to 100K this year. That's pretty much top of my to-do list. I, I would love to get 100,000 subscribers um, just for ego, really. I just want that silver plaque and then I can put the silver plaque behind me and then just show off to people. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Leica Q2 video, whatever this was. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.